me find my pain But you made a better way oh, oh, oh. I've been saved Goodbye to the sinner I'm held by the Father above Showing me all of my life in a new light Every step, every breath Like it's the first time You could have run away Leaving me there in my shame Leaving me fighting my pain But you made a better way oh, oh, oh. I've been
Right. Okay. If you like to take your seats. <laughs> we, uh, that wasn't just a practice for us. <clears throat> that, John said, oh, yes, it was. And, and um, it's for, we'll sing it later. Okay, well, it's really great to see you all this morning. I'm Anne, and I'm leading the worship this morning. Stuart will be bringing God's word. If you're watching this online, you're very welcome too. Everyone here is very, very welcome. Um, And um, the thought that I had this morning was I wanted to give thanks. Give thanks. Our first um, song is going to be Give Thanks to the Lord. But first of all, I wanted to just run through a couple of psalms with you. Psalm 9 says, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. That's not easy to do, to give your whole heart to something. But we will aim to do that this morning. (laughs) I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and exult you. I will sing praise to your name. <clears throat> now, do you think you could um, join in with Psalm 136? I haven't written it down, but it's like a response that goes, His steadfast love endures forever. All right, so we'll say that. His steadfast love endures forever. I know what, let's stand up to do this. Let's proclaim this before the Lord, right? Okay. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His His steadfast steadfast love love endures endures forever. forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of gods, for his His steadfast steadfast love love endures endures forever. forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, his His steadfast steadfast love love endures endures forever. forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of Lords, his His steadfast steadfast love. love Said that twice, but it doesn't matter, does it? (laughs) Give thanks to the Lord of Lords. That's what we should do, isn't it? To him alone does great wonders, for his steadfast love love endures endures forever. To him who by understanding made the heavens, his steadfast steadfast love love endures endures forever. forever. To him who spread out the earth upon the waters, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who made the great lights, for his steadfast love endures forever. The sun to rule over the day, his steadfast love endures forever. And last of all, the moon and stars to rule over the night, for his steadfast love endures forever. We'll sing. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. Now, I've got some instruments there, and it would be really good if somebody could dish them out. Can you dish a few instruments out? Don't take no for an answer. (laughs) (laughs) Right, okay, let's go. Lord, our God, our 
rising from the rising to the setting sun his love endures forever by the grace of God we will carry on his love endures forever sing praise voice this morning and I'm glad you are because our next song is old words to a new-ish tune now I can't pretend I'm Lou Fellingham standing up here singing this (laughs) but um, this is this is to God be the glory but the tune is from Lou and Nathan Fellingham so you know it, it goes with a swing you'll soon pick it up Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. 
presence mm. and sing and be joyful before you and we do want to give you thanks we live to give you thanks we live to praise you we live to worship you and father i just feel that in this service you're going to be lifted up father by your holy spirit mm. so father just bless us all now as we come into your presence amen, amen. please take a seat better than that. Good morning. It's great to see you this morning. My name is Stuart. I'm the pastor, minister, whatever name people give me. I get many. Uh, and it's great to welcome you here and those online as well. Before uh, we get on with the all-age uh, slot information, I've got a very important notice. I need to pay attention. Should, for any instance, the fire system go off at any point this morning, or any time we're in this building, there are three things you need to do. First thing is do not panic. Second thing is you need to stand up where you are. If you are in this room, for instance, and you're sort of this side of the, that hatch, then you make your way out those doors. If you're sort of further back, you just go out the main doors. What you do is you walk around the building, and the assembly point is the grass area at the far side of the car park. If you are little or in one of the other rooms, then there's a fire exit that way. If you're in the toilets, just come out the toilet, go out that exit. If you're young people, little people, and you're through there, you go out that door, and you stay with your leaders at all times. Do not go to mum, dad, parent, carer, the adult you are with. You have to stay with your leaders. I have no idea why I'm telling you this information. <laughs> and please feel comfortable for the rest of this service. <laughs> We're going to move on with birthdays. So, as a family, church family, Christian family, we like to celebrate birthdays together. So, if you have had a birthday in the last week <coughs> and you didn't get up last Sunday, or you've got a birthday coming up, would you please come down to the front? We wish to celebrate with you. Someone's been pointed at. I know there's two people in this room who are having birthdays. Oh, there's three now. <coughs> two weeks, so that's fine. We can go with that. Two very shy people. So, what's your name? Karis. Oh. Good morning. What's your name? Evelyn, Keris, Evelyn, we have Esther, we have, I know, I know, I'm just letting Sue get past, we've got Innes and Sue, I'm not going to embarrass them, ask them how old they're going to be, because I got told off last time for doing that, <laughs> so we're going to remember, Keris, Evelyn, Esther, Innes and Sue, oh dear, have we got the words on the screen? Excellent. And we sing it slightly differently, so if you're not the quite happy birthday words, it's close. So sing to the screen and we'll see how we get on. Happy birthday to And we'd like to present you with a choice of chocolate or bookmark or pencil. Ooh, excellent. Would you like a chocolate or bookmark or pencil? 
Keep it one you like. Uh, I got Esther. And this was so fast then. There you go. I know I shared their pain last week. I don't like it either. But happy birthday to you all. I hope you have a great day and a good week. This morning we're looking at kind of a series, our vision series, looking at the, the word seeking to follow. And those who are not going to Sunday school and all the youth groups, you're stuck in here with me this morning. And we're going to be hearing about a few things Jesus said about following. But sometimes, you know how Jesus sometimes tells us stories and you just go, I get that. There's nothing I need to add to it. Um, can I have a volunteer to come and read this morning's story? You come up. Come on, Rosanna. It's not that long. Everyone knows it anyway. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell. And the great was the fall of it. Excellent. That makes sense to me. Build your house on the rock, and it stands firm. Build your house on the sand, and it, when the rains come, it's quite dodgy. I thought, how could I illustrate that any better? I thought, I can't. I can't do anything. But what I could do is humiliate some people. Uh, so I thought we'll do that instead. So I need a volunteer. My volunteer is going to be Sean, because he's quite light. Uh, my other volunteer is going to be Neil Patterson. <laughs> he doesn't know anything about this, but I know he's up for fun. And my third volunteer is Archie. Right, Neil, what I need you to do is kneel down on your hands and knees, please. And he's done his hair nice and neat today, so <laughs> that's fine. Right, I'm um, glad you were here, Neil, that Sean is going to be standing on your back. So, yep. Well, uh, take your shoes off. <laughs> oh, dear. Come on. Right, Catherine, can you come and, and hold Sean's hand? Because I don't... There's no... Of course not. Right, Neil. How are you feeling? Right, can you stand on here, please, Archie? Right, so we don't have a sprinkler system in this church building, so if the fire alarm should go off at any point, you will not be sprinkled with lots of water. Right, you are standing on a rock, right? Is it moving? Give it, give it a little shake. Okay, you seem quite stable. Sean, can you give it a bit of a wobble? Oh, okay, it's not too bad. All right, this is what happens when it rains. Archie? Oh, it doesn't matter. All right, you get a bit wet. All right, are you still standing? Right, that's good. Rock, good, stable. All right, now it's going to start raining. Oh, he's doing well. How long is he going to... Oh, oh, he's moving. Oh, I think that's enough before I get... All right, big round of applause for our volunteers. Sean, off you get. <laughs> Detox? <laughs> no. This is very much clean. Yes. It's fine. Don't slip over. He does. Neil, come and have a chocolate. <laughs> Sean, you can get a chocolate as well. Rosanna, you can get one because you read beautifully. Archie might as well. We've run out of chocolates, Melanie. Oh, you're there. Oh, come on. But why, why did Jesus tell that story? Why do you think? Why do you think he said that? And, and adults can volunteer as well if you want. Cammy. 
show you should pick the obvious answer, which is to get, follow him instead of stand on the unstable sand. Okay, pick the obvious answer. Do you want to preach later? Because <laughs> that's, that's the message, the obvious answer. It's not always the easiest answer, but it's the obvious answer. Um, and you say about Jesus. Why Jesus? What did he describe himself as? Can you remember? It's a fan. This, the rock. The rock. Jesus described himself as the rock because if you stand on his words, stand on Jesus', then what that means is it's a stable footing for how we live our life. But if you don't, if you choose the other way, and it might be fun and interesting and different and easy and everyone else is doing it, it's not a stable ground. It's not going to last forever. And that's the important story that we're going to learn. You guys in Sunday school are going to learn about jealousy. We had a lot of that yesterday um, with my two. So I'm hoping they'll improve um, jealousy. Maybe we should all have a lesson on jealousy. But I'm just going to pray for you guys and your leaders as we say goodbye to children and young people. Hang on, hang on, let me pray. Okay, you ready? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your son Jesus and him being a rock, that we can hold our faith strong in his words and through what he did on the cross and being resurrected to bring us life. And we pray, Lord, you help us all, whether we're young or old, to understand better the rock that is Jesus and to stand firm on those foundations. We pray for the young people and children as they go to their groups. We thank you for their leaders and all their helpers for their preparation and willing to give up their time to serve the young people and children this way. And we pray that they'll have lots of fun in your name. Amen. Amen. Right, off you go to your groups. And remember, should the fire system go off, do not panic. Listen to your group leaders and stay with your groups. I've been told I'm not very subtle. I'm trying to be subtle this morning. <laughs> oh, risk assessment. Well done, Melanie. Was it Rosie? That's why she's the secretary. Right, I'm going to pass back to Anne. Do you know what? I forgot to take up the offering um, in the last song. Oh, that's pretty awful, isn't it? Um, well, um, please, can the stewards wait on you for your offering during this song then? Um, if you're a visitor, please don't feel you have to contribute. You know, we don't expect you to. You're just glad. We're just glad you're here. All right. God, I look to you. God, I look to you. I want me overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you. You're where my
Halleluja. again. Hallelujah. Just voices. that you do reign. And Father, we want to thank you now for the monies which have been gathered up and the monies that have gone through electronic means. And they're all for you, Lord. We want to use them wisely for the extension of your kingdom right here. So thank you, Father, because you give us everything. Amen. 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 Uh, Loretta's going to come up and um, speak to us on a very important issue now. Good morning. Is this on? Yes. Good morning, everybody. Anne's, morning. Anne's here for moral support, and she's actually part of the project as well. Um, I'm going to make no excuses for uh, spending this time because it's really important. Because God spoke to me a while ago, and he said, feed my lambs, tender my sheep. And we are the sheep. And we are part of fellowship is part of community, and it's really important that we support each other. So I make no excuses for the time. The first thing I want to say, and it's interesting that Rosie should, uh, sorry, that Anne should say we're giving thanks, because the thing that I want to do is to give thanks for everything pastorally that goes on in our church. I've just, and this is from the leadership, it's, it isn't everything, it's not exhaustible, but these things in our church are already going on. Home groups support people within their home groups. The visiting team do an amazing job, lots more than you would ever know that they do. Um, and there's lots of other things going on. But sometimes in our fellowship, there's need for long-term care for people, and there's critical care. And, and that's, uh, that's actually quite hard to, to fill and to support. And so, as the elder of this church, and one of the elders of this church, I want to start turning two pages over. I want to start a pastoral team. And this is a, a team with intent to support people within our fellowship when there is a need. I, I am going to be the team leader of this pastoral team. And we're going to have three teams of people that we need um, within this with this pastoral team. We've got a, a food lead or a food coordinator and Anne here has already said that she will coordinate that. We want a, a lifts lead or a lifts coordinator, and we want a housekeeping lead. So the food is for things like um, if somebody's had an operation, they can't cook, or if they're poorly in any other way and they need some support. And also, I know that Anne's been involved in this before, and you all know that, and also for... Um, meals if we've had alpha etc so um, that's what the food and the, the the lifts lead might be taking someone to the supermarket they may, may have a hospital appointment um, there's all sorts of times when lifts are needed and the housekeeping um, is maybe for feeding someone's cats if they've gone away or if they're poorly 
or uh, taking someone's ironing. I know someone in church, I'm not going to mention their name, who loves ironing but hates cooking. So I know where her name would be on this list. I would be the other way around myself. Um, so we're hoping to set this team up and we're hoping that a lot of people will put their name on the team because the more people that we have on the team, the less you'll be called upon. And if you work and you think, well, I can do this, but I can't do it until after 5.30, that's not a problem. Just put that down after 5.30 p.m. or only on weekends. It's not a problem. We will collate a list of names and telephone numbers. And if there's a need, the coordinator would ring and ask if you can help. I know that Anne um, has done it in different ways in the past, which has been very successful. And I know that she still wants to continue to do that. Do you want to just say a little bit about that? No, no, she will, yeah, I mean, I know that Anne will also come around individually and speak to people if she, you know, if she needs support, so we're not saying house groups don't support each other, still carry on doing those things, and still visiting team, go and visit, this is for more critical or long-term care, so what, what we're asking people to pray about and to do is to put your name down and and your telephone number and offer to do lifts or food or housekeeping. You may want to do one, you may want to do two. You may not be called, praise the Lord if there's not, not a need, that's great. Um, and also you may not be, just because you're first on the list doesn't mean that you're going to be called first. There may be a relationship between someone on the list and the person that needs that help, so they would be called first. But we need to tender our sheep. There are people in our fellowship who need that support. And they may not need it now, but they may need it in the future. So I would ask you to pray into whether you could be the team leader, which would be really great for the, for the lifts and for the housekeeping. It's only coordinating it, making those calls. It's not actually having to do it each time. Um, and ask that you pray that you could put your name down on here. I'm going to put this board at the back, and I'm going to stand by it. And if you want to ask me any questions on the way out, I'm happy to answer them. If you want to pray into it, please do that, and then come back to me and, and message me or phone me and say that you want to be part of it, and you'll be added. It's not exhaustive. It can be added to next week. You can be taken off if there's a time when you can't actually be, you know, you can't actually do it, and you say, can you take me off for now? So that can happen as well. But I just think it would be really important that we look after one another. Is there anything else, Anne? Yeah. And a lot of it comes in through our clots, especially with food. If we've got somebody, if we've got somebody with a, a bereavement or something, we might need to cover the food for over a month or a new baby. So we need sort of quite a few people to help. My 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 call in is for the food area, the uh, the host in their area. So we might need people to help for uh, you know over a month. So it, the more people, the less you have to uh, do in that particular slot. Okay, so I'm going to leave that uh, prayerfully with you, and hopefully my list will be full by the end of today. Praise the Lord. I have faith, true faith in you and true faith in him. Fancy that. Oh, let's put this
did. Yeah, I'm always ugly out tonight. <laughs> Well, now that was um, that was a bit of excitement, wasn't it? Um, just a little unexpected um, walking about for a few people. <laughs> I, I'm sorry if um, if you you know if you felt that wasn't something that at this point you didn't <laughs> want to do, but regulations say uh, that we have to do it. And it reminded me, actually, of what Loretta was saying about taking care of our flock and pastoral care. And this is all, one, what, this is all part of it. And when I actually was walking in with us all, we were like, we were like a flock of sheep. <laughs> and we actually had um, the marshals who were the shepherds and, and I think that was a really good analogy you know I'm just going to pray into what Loretta um, spoke about just for a minute um, if you'd like to just think in your mind of somebody who this might apply to um, that you know about so Father I just want to thank you that um, the initiative has been taken to look after our flock. Thank you for Loretta and the elders and the leaders of the teams. I thank you, Father, in advance for the people who will put their names down. And I know, Father, because it's on, I know it's on your heart to take care and love your flock. So I know it will be on people's hearts here. And I just pray that um, those people will come forward um, and put their name on the list. And Father, yeah. we know at this time there are people in our fellowship who struggle. Some people are struggling with physical problems. Some people may be struggling with spiritual problems that we don't know anything about. Some people may be struggling with mental problems. And each of those need a healing touch from you but they also need good neighborliness from us. And we know that, Lord. So, Father, just spend a minute just thinking and praying for someone that you know who needs the Lord's touch. Don't forget what the Bible says, that people will know we are Christians because of the love we have for each other. Mm. Amen. Amen. Um, before we have our reading, we'll just sing, Lord, you have my heart and I will search for yours. Jesus, take my life and lead me on. And that's um, a vision for the church and a vision for us as well. We want Jesus to lead us on. Stand or sit just as you feel comfortable. Lord, you have my heart and I will search
have my heart. Lord, you have my heart, and I will search for yours. Jesus, take my life and lead me on. Lord, you have my heart, and I will search for yours. Let me be Father, we thank you for your word, which will be read to us, and we thank you for the word which Stuart has for us, and we ask that you'll give him the strength and the wisdom and all the knowledge he needs to um, tell us what you're speaking to him about. Mm -hmm. So help us to listen. Amen. A reading from the English Standard Version, Matthew 7, 13 to 29. Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction, and those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So, every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, you will be recognized by your fruit. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name? And do many mighty works in your name. And then will I declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like wise, a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house. But it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And when Jesus finished these sayings, the crowds were astonished at his teaching, for he was teaching them as one who had authority and not as their scribes. This is the word of God.
if it wasn't. You've all passed the test. We won't need another fire test till next year. If there's anything from that which you think that didn't work very well or that would have been better, please let us know. Um, because it's important that we, we make sure that our policies, procedures to help everyone get out of the building safely um, is, happens. So we'd like to hear that. But you all got out quickly, safely, and thank you for that. Um, you did what you were told, which is quite interesting in light of what we're looking at today. So we're working our way through uh, a, a sermon series called About Vision. And we're doing this because it's going to culminate in a week of prayer and vision as we seek God's voice for what's next for us here at TVBF. And it's important that you feel part of that. This is not a process that the leadership are going through or select one or two. It's all of us as a church family together. And uh, information about that prayer week has been sent out. And next week, we'll have little leaflets with more information on it. Um, and the website, if you go to the website, that tells you a lot as well. Um, so you can find that information out. And it's all going to end with a 24-hour prayer and fasting opportunity. I'm really looking forward to that, <clears throat> in a sense that it's been a while since I've fasted, I must admit. Um, and it's been a while um, for me to spend that time in prayer. Uh, but we're not asking everyone to pray and fast for 24 hours, but we do ask you to do your bit. So you can sign up for um, an hour's slot. And you can do that via the website or just get in touch with one of the leadership or email info at tvbf.co.uk and say, I'd like to pray at three in the morning. And that would be great. And you can do that in your own homes, but what we're going to offer and open up here at TVC is a 24-hour prayer room, engine, whatever words are used. And that's going to be a place where you can come even at three in the morning, four in the morning, whatever time you feel led. Um, it could be 10 o'clock in, in the evening or whatever. If you don't like Eurovision, um, it's my sanctuary away from Eurovision that night. And that's going to test some of you, Eurovision or prayer. Uh, I'll leave that to you. Um, and there'll be activities and things to help lead us in prayer over that time, or you can just sit and be quiet. Um, but it's not just a time of prayer. It's a time of listening and hearing what God is saying. And last week, we looked at this idea of seeking to sacrifice, that if we're really serious about doing what God wants us to do next, that we have to demonstrate that. And that's one way of, uh, one reason why we fast, to show God that we are serious. But the real sacrifice will come when God says, okay, TVBF, you're serious about what you want to do for me. This is what I want you to do. And the sacrifice will come because we might have to give up things that we've done before. We might have to give up time and energy or uh, do things differently um, according to what God's calling us to do. But it's important that we understand why we're doing that. And so today we're going to think about seeking to follow. We're going to think about what it is means to actually do what God calls us to do. And I use that word do uh, as we'll find out. Let's watch a short video um, it works. There you go. What ruins over 300,000 British car journeys each year? Radio One. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good. 300,000 British car journeys. Is it kids in the back going, oh, we're nearly near yet? And you go, no, put the hood back on your head. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, you were barely warmed up. The sat-nav sending the... you down onto, into a field. Basically, you are right. 300,000 insurance claims for serious road traffic incidents or accidents are put down to sat-nav these sat -nav. days. We were in the car, my girlfriend genuinely said, where would we be without sat-nav? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that, love. That's, That's very good. Yeah. Well, there was a touring acting group whose pink Mercedes van they had to be rescued off the roof of it by helicopter because the satnav basically directed them down into a ford. Yeah, uh, but a, how a, much a stream. of a div would you have to be to actually see it ahead <laughs> of you? Well, it might have been night. It. They're in the countryside. You go down a lane, and the lane turns out to be. Yeah, I, but it's I, quite good quite... these days because cars have got headlights. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fair point. She's got a very persuasive voice. <laughs> she has. I call them my navigatrix. 
I've had an idea. I know yeah. this isn't Dragon's Den, it's QI, but I've had an idea. Yeah, which is you get sat nav, yeah, yeah, but you print it out into a booklet that you can just flick through. <laughs> <laughs> what would you call it? Uh, oh. Uh, Sackless. A satless. A satless. What I don't like about, about sat-nav is when it interrupts the radio. You'll be listening to a very nice thing on the radio, maybe a play or something. Yes. And the voice, of course, cuts over the radio, always at a crucial moment. So you'll be getting to the climax of the play. And I tell you, David, the reason that we never had children is turn left in 40 hours. <laughs> Seeking to follow is all about three things. It's about... Why is this not working? What ruin? I'm pressing the wrong way, that's why. <laughs> Anyone seen that sign before? This is the state of play we now have in our country, where we need signs that basically says, if you're following sat-nav and your truck, do not go down this way. <laughs> have you ever come across directions to a place, and it says, here's our postcode, but if you're using sat-nav, use this postcode. Um, I've, I tell you what, our sat-nav is really good, but it has taken us down some very interesting roads, especially travelling around here. Um, the back road um, from via, I can't remember where it is, but it takes you down a field, basically, to get down to home. A drive in Turkey wanted to go to Gibraltar. He typed in uh, Gibraltar Point into his sat-nav. <laughs> and I, I didn't know this, because my geography of this country isn't perfect, but apparently there is a Gibraltar Point in Skegness. <laughs> <laughs> he ended up, you know, I don't... He ended up in Skegness, which was a long way from where he was supposed to go. There needs to be some intelligence when we use sat-nav and a bit of common sense. But what's important and what's funny about sat-nav is it's people depend on it to get to where they want to go. And why do they depend on it? What reasons do we use sat-nav? Well, any ideas? Can't read, Can't read a map. Well, you don't have a map, you know. Any other reasons? Trust the experts. Uh, Avoiding traffic jams, it is. If you've got traffic or if you just drive off a road and hope it takes you somewhere. There's lots of good reasons we use SatNav. Um, and we trust and hope that will get us to the destination because SatNav knows all the roads, it knows and plans all the routes, uh, and you can have some pretty nice voices to help you. But as we we're thinking about seeking to follow, the three things I want us to think about is where, where are we going? So sat-nav, we use sat-nav because we want to get somewhere. So where is it we are trying to get to in our life? And the other thing we need to look at is who we're going to follow and why. And this is what Jesus was talking about in this passage in Matthew. He's talking about lifestyle, how to live your life, and what it means if you can live your life in the way that he's asking you too. This is at the end of his Sermon on the Mount, and there's loads of great stuff in there, Matthew 5 and 6, if you go home and read it. But essentially, he's telling people a way of living that's helpful. So where, where are we going? Jesus said this, enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is narrow, and the way that leads, the way is hard that leads to life. And those who find it are few. Life is all about choices. It's about choices on what we eat, what we read, what we watch on TV, what we say to people. And there's good choices, there's lots of good choices, and there's lots of bad choices. But what does this say to us? Enter by the narrow gate. And that's interesting because we don't often pick up on that sentence, that first part of this. We think about, oh, it's narrow, it's hard, at least to life though. But this first part, enter by the narrow gate. Is that a question? 
is it a request? Or is it a statement? Jesus is making it clear that the way to go is through the narrow gate. Through the narrow gate. That's a gate that's narrow. Might be narrower than that. Who knows? Because we make choices. And we've got different options in front of us. We've got the narrow gate choice. And we've got the wide gate choice. Why is it narrow? Well, we live in a society at the moment where narrow viewpoint Narrowness is frowned upon. Why are you so narrow? You've got to be more open. You've got to be more honest. You've got to, be, you've got to listen to different views and opinions. There's two roads Jesus taught about. He's taught road one, the narrow road, leads to life. The other road leads to destruction. One road is narrow. The other road is wide and easy. <laughs> but it doesn't always get you where you want to go. Why do sometimes when you sat now? Because we, the obvious road, you know, if I want to go to London, the obvious would, would be down the M1. That would be the obvious wide road, but <laughs> that's not the best road. Very rarely is it the best road, because it's not really a road, it's usually a car park or a very slow road. But you look at it, you think that's the obvious choice, that's the best choice, it's the one that gives most options. But Jesus talks about a narrow path, because there aren't many options that we need to take. There aren't as many good options as there are bad options. Why is it hard? Why is it now a choice hard? It's not because of what that path actually is. It's because of what we need to do to walk it. It's where the analogy of sat now completely falls down. Because it's not about the road. It's about the person walking the road. Why is it the hard way? Because it involves sacrifice. It involves Obedience, following the right way, the way Jesus tells us to go, is hard. There's nothing easy about it. Why? Is, it's hard for lots of reasons. Why? Because we're, we have a narrow viewpoint. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. There's no one who can go to the Father except through me. That's pretty narrow. <coughs> Don't sin. Don't do what you want to do. Do what God calls you to do. That's quite narrow. Repentance. Say you're sorry. What? Well, I'm wrong. I don't want to do that. That's the narrow way. But where are we following to depends on which path we choose. And although in this picture the opposite. They're not, I don't think they're opposite. I think they're quite side by side. Is that if you're walking the narrow path, you've still got the wide path. Now, you still see it. You can still look at it and think about it. You don't forget about it. You're not walking away from it. It's always there. And we need to understand that where we're following is to life. But sometimes we view this as a destination. We think of it, oh, heaven. Heaven's where we're going. This is where we're ending up. That's our destination. That's not what Jesus talks about. Jesus talks very little about heaven. He talks a lot about how you live, how you journey. The narrow path is, in part, our destination in the sense that it's how we live our lives. So who are we following? So we're... We're following the life, the path that gives us life, not destruction. Oh, that's what we're trying to do. So where are we following? Who are we following? Because the people who are walking the wide path, 
want you to come with them. The people walking the wide path think it's the best path. They don't see the whole picture. They don't see the end point. They just see the path. All paths lead to God. Verse 15, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. Who's Jesus talking about? Who are these false prophets? So if we're called to walk the narrow way, we need to watch out for those of us who attend us to walk the wide way. All paths lead to God. We live in a society where people justify their own choices. It makes me feel good. It feels right to me. How can God allow this? They excuse their own choices. They go, it's okay for me. It's different. I'm different to you. I've got different experiences. I've got different choices. What's good for you is not good for me. Or people create their own choices. All paths lead to God? No, they don't. The Bible talks a lot about false prophets. Why does it talk a lot about false prophets? Because these are people who don't like the idea of this narrow path. A narrow path ruins our freedom. We're not free to make our own choices. It's narrow. We're restricted. I want to do things my way. If you go through a wide path, you've got lots of space, haven't you? Lots of opportunity to do things in a different way. Single paths restrict your choices. If you've got a wide path, you can go in different directions a little bit. And the single path, the narrow path, shows us the true and false ways. And false prophets don't like that. They like their ways. They like their wide path. And they want to bring people on that for whatever reason. Companionship, lead you astray. And they're false for lots of different reasons. Some are false just to con people. You don't have to look far on Christian TV channels to find those false prophets. Send in your seed money. Hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, a thousand dollars. Don't know what that's all about. I really struggle with that. Their doctrine might be okay, but their motive is wrong. They're not following the right person, and if we follow them, we're not following the right person because we we start to put our onus on people. We start to look and depend on people, on these great preachers, these great authors, these great Christian visionaries. They might have the wrong doctrine. You see, I'm not talking about people in society. I don't really care what people in society say. I care about what people in the church say. And people have the wrong doctrine. They can be confused about what they believe. Or they really believe in, in the, the, the false doctrine that they follow. Some might have said something and they've just stuck to it. There's loads of false doctrine that we believe in that have been twisted over the years through church traditions and culture. It might be a series we do later on. What does the Bible really say about it? It'd be hard to do. Some people don't know the truth, but jump on the bandwagon, get all excited and caught up in what's going on. Or they're, they're false prophets because they base their doctrine on experience. What feels right to me? God tells me this. We have to be very careful with who we listen to. And that includes me. I don't mean I need to, I need to be careful, but listen to me. You know, don't take my word for it. Go home, read this passage, think about it. If you're part of a home group, you'll be discussing some questions on this. If you're not, you can still go to the website and download the questions and have a think for yourselves. Who are we following? 
It's great when people say to me, have you read this book? It's really good. Or have you listened to this worship song? Or seen this preacher online? And I love watching people preach. I love reading books. But are we spending the same sort of time in the Bible? Are we reading someone writing about the Bible rather than reading the Bible? It's very tempting to do. I'm not saying that all these authors are wrong. But who are we following? What is Jesus going to say? You'll recognize them from their fruits. You'll recognize them from their fruits. What are these fruits? What are we thinking about when we think of fruits? Some people say it's new Christians, new converts. I'm not too sure about that. Whenever Paul talks about fruit, he talks about evidence of who you are, your character. What is the fruit in your life? That's a good question. What is the fruit in your life? Why do we follow? Well, it's a picture from the Sistine Chapel, I think. God and man. God trying to connect with man. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. This to me is a why. How many of us, how many of us says, Lord, Lord? False prophets can say, Jesus is my Lord. We can all say, Jesus is my Savior. But that can be on a very superficial level. It's just words. What's the fruit from saying that? I don't know. Why do we follow? Why do we follow Jesus? That's who we should be following. Is it for personal gain? Personal gain? Personal gain? Well, for some people it is. Some people, the Christian faith is all about a ticket to heaven. I want to know where I go when I die. If I believe in Jesus, I will get my ticket to heaven. I will sort it. Some people, false teachers, do it for money, for glory, attention. Some people try to talk in the talk. Just like saying, I'm a Christian, I go to church. Jesus, my Lord, all this stuff. And we can all say the words. I'm not doubting the words are important, believe me. But why do we say those words? Why are we following Jesus? Is it just to talk the talk? It's what's expected of us. I think that's what our young people and children go through, isn't it? They learn the talk, they start saying it, and then through that, belief might come or it might not. Heart and motivation is what Jesus is talking about. The one who does the will of my Father. The fruit we have is, are we being sacrificial? Are we being obedient? Are we doing what God wants us to do? Are we following Jesus because we want to be led? When we put satnav in a destination, we don't do it and then drive our own way. Maybe some of us do. I've done it a few times. I don't have the local knowledge here, but back in Essex, I know a few other routes that Satnav didn't take me down because it does the quickest route or the shortest route. But it's not about the destination. It's about how we live. Our heart and motivation is not a ticket to heaven. It should be to serve God. And the sacrifice comes into that. That as we seek God, we say, God, what do you want us to do next as a church? We've got this great building. We've got Western. So much opportunity and God's opening up doors for us, left, right, and center. People coming and using us from the community. How do we harness that? I'm getting messages from residential homes or to retirement homes saying, can you come and do a service? We're not even having to ask. God is opening up these doors. But our heart and motivation comes from a few things. First thing is true Repentance. See, Jesus is calling us to be repentant. 
What does that mean? It means to turn around, think differently, do things not how you've done them before, not do things because they've worked before, not do things because you've always done them before. And that's not, it's not always about sinfulness. Sin comes into it, but repentance is about thinking how God thinks, thinking how Jesus thinks, not how we think. Because that's not always, it's not always awful when we do things on our own strength in the sense that we can sometimes get it right. But is that because of who we are? Is it blind luck? Is God still leading us even if we're being rebellious? But here's a question for you. Okay, it's not a question. Does sin cling to you or do you cling to sin? I'll let you read that for a second. Do you cling to sin? Does sin cling to you or does, do you cling to sin? That's what me, that's the life that Jesus wants for us. That's the narrow way. It's about us not clinging to sin. Just to clarify, the first one is what we're, we're not looking for, but we don't want to chase sin. We don't want to seek sin. We don't want to embrace sin. We want to get away from it. We won't get right all the time. Sin is trying to get us. We've got a sinful desire in us. We've got Satan trying to get in at us. Especially when things are going well. He's like, he doesn't like that. He won't like the fact that this church is growing. He won't like the fact that we're worshipping community. And we want to do what God wants. He won't like that. And it'll get harder. And that's why you have to work more together. That's why pastoral support, even in the practical, is so important. That we look after each other. But do we allow sin to cling to us? Well, we hopefully not. We try and get away from it. But I'd rather sin was chasing me than I was chasing sin. And hopefully you'll get that image. There's another quote here. The Bible recognizes no faith that does not lead to obedience, nor does it recognize any obedience that does not spring from faith. The two are opposite ends of the same coin. Words and deeds, deeds and words. We looked at that in James and we came to the conclusion, I hope, that you need both. But true faith demonstrates good deeds, great deeds. That's the fruit. And the good deeds, if it doesn't come from faith, then they're just random things. And what is Jesus getting at? He's saying the path is now, it's hard it's not easy. You're going to be saying things that are different to the world. You're going to be doing things different to the world. You're going to be seeking things different to the world. But don't miss out on what Jesus is outlining. Two houses, which one would you live in? The one on the right, the one on the left. They look, both look pretty nice, don't they? Depends if you like green doors. Oh dear. Why have we got to be on our guard against false prophets? Because it's so hard to spot unless you dig deep. It's so hard. Why is the way narrow? Because if you just look at the top and don't dig in, you'll pick the easy option. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house. But it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. Why, who, where we follow? It's all about Jesus. It's about that narrow way that Jesus tells us to walk. Walk the narrow path. It's not even an option. So, the choice we make isn't which path to walk, it's how do we, how do we live, how do we walk the narrow path. That's all about Jesus, isn't it? There's some things that we think about when we think about our faith. So, acknowledge who and what Jesus did. Jesus, Son of God, tick, died on the cross, tick, came back to life, tick, said some good things, tick. Is that what the narrow path is all about? Well, I think that might be the start of walking the narrow path. 
Call him Lord and Savior of your life. Well, there, that's important. But calling someone Lord and letting them be Lord are two different things. Jesus said, there are people who call me Lord, Lord, but I will not know them. Be baptized, witness to people. Yep, that's a good thing to do. But I know people have been baptized and they're not walking the walk anymore. Being baptized, as great witness as it is, is not a guarantee or a free for all. Not free for all. It's not a guarantee or a um, concrete sort of proof of your faith. People can be baptized. People, you know, say to me, I want to get baptized, and we ask them questions. They say, yes, Jesus is my Lord and Savior and stuff, and you take them at their word. Read the Bible and pray regularly. I do that. Is that not me walking the path? Do his Father's will. Jesus says many things that all links into that. But in terms of this passage, this context. Jesus says. I lost it. It's gone. I don't know where it's gone. Is it verse 21? Yes, it is. It's just right at the bottom. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, went to the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father. See, we can have the best sat-nav in the world, but if we don't drive and follow it, we'll never get to where it tells us to go. Our faith is, we could sit in our house, read the Bible, pray, might have been baptised, but if we're not doing what God calls us to do, then we're not going anywhere. We're not following him. We're staying still. In order to follow someone, it involves movement. It involves movement. And when Jesus finished these sayings, the crowds were astonished at his teaching. Maybe one day people were astonished at my teaching, but not. For he was teaching them as one who had authority and not as their scribes. Jesus spoke with authority because he knew the truth. I assume that's someone's car. What are you building your life upon? Are you building upon the great authors, the great Christian tomes, A.W. Tozer, Charles Spurgeon? Who are the modern ones? I don't know. Reading their books? Are we watching the great preachers? Are we burning our life upon Jesus? Jesus is the rock. We need to look out for those who are leading us away from the rock. And they could be in this room. We've got to look for the narrow path and follow it. And as a church, we've got to support each other. Jesus taught with authority because he had the authority we need to listen to him let's pray Heavenly Father we thank you for your vision and we pray Lord that as a church community seeking your vision you reveal to us (coughs) where you want us to go we want to follow you Lord we want to give up the things that we need to give up to change how we think. Might be how we use this building, Lord. Might be how we socialize and what we do in our spare time. Might be to read your word more. We want to be a church, Lord, who hears your words and does them. 
We want you to be Lord of us as individuals and as a church. So we ask, Lord, that you help us to know your vision. Help us to hear your voice. Help us to understand better what it means to follow you. Amen. Lot to think about there, isn't there? Let's have just a couple of quiet. I was just saying, let's have a couple of quiet songs. Perhaps we're not meant to have quiet songs. Um, uh, while we just consider what Stuart has been saying to us. So let's start by singing, Jesus be the centre. Jesus and we go down that narrow path and Jesus leads the way if you would like to speak to anybody about this you can always speak to Stuart or one of us or there's a prayer team um, we'll be at the back um, but you know serious things to consider and we're just going to sing about surrendering ourselves and if you've not done that before then that's a step you need to take but do sell, tell somebody. I'm giving you my heart, all that is within. Lay it all down for the sake of you, my King. I'm giving you my dreams. I'm laying down my rights. I'm giving up my pride for the promise of you.
just sung that we surrender all to you and I just pray Lord that that may come from our hearts and that our lives will now reflect the fact that we've surrendered all to you and we put our lives in your hands and you will give us vision and we pray that you'll work among us each one of us and show us your heart for this fellowship for the vision that you have for us. We ask, Lord, that you'll make that clear to us as we surrender ourselves to you, Lord. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Time's going on, so um, we will do our final song, I think, which is a jolly, jolly one. Really? Yes. Um, really? Yeah. King of heaven. King of heaven. So let your will be done here, it says. Jesus, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Okay, shall we stand to sing this one?
you, Father. You are the King of Heaven, and you will come one day. You are coming again, but we want your kingdom here now, Lord, spreading around in Toaster, and that is what our prayer is, that more people will come to know and love you. Amen. Amen. Uh, as a family, let's look at each other and say the grace to each other. May the grace of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ and the love, love of God, God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Uh, tea and coffee are served at the back. Some of us are staying to lunch, so we thank the people who are getting the lunch together. <laughs> King of Heaven again, because he wants to play. No, I'm just looking for the right song. King again. 